The Somali Rebellion was the beginning of the civil war in Somalia that occurred in the late 1970s and early 1990s. The rebellion started in 1986 when Siad Bar began attacking clan-based dissident groups opposed to his rule with his special forces, the Red Berets. Duab CAs. The dissidents had been becoming more powerful for nearly a decade following his abrupt switch of allegiance from the Soviet Union to the United States and the disastrous Agaden War of 1977-1978. When Barr was injured in an automobile accident on May 23, 1986, rivals within Barr's own government and opposition groups became bolder and entered into open conflict. Siad Bar's flight from the capital, on January 26, 1991, marked a distinct shift in the conflict. From that date until April 1992, fighting continued up until the arrival of the UN missions to Somalia UNOSOMI and UNOSOM2. Siad Bar's collective punishment refers to clan-based violent actions by former Somalia President Siad Bar against what he viewed as rival clan members during the anti-Bar Somali rebellion. The most egregious forms of clan-based violence perpetrated by the Bar dictatorship were against the Isaac and Majirdin clans. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Crackdowns by the Bar administration. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Against the Majirdin. In the aftermath of the Agaden debacle, a group of disgruntled army officers attempted a coup d'état against the regime in April 1978. Their leader was Colonel Mohamed Sheikh U.S. Man, a member of the Majirdin clan, which resides mostly in northeastern Somalia. The coup failed and 17 alleged ringleaders, including U.S. Man, were summarily executed. All but one of the executed were of the Majirdin clan. One of the plotters, Lt. Col. Abdullahi Yusuf Ahmed escaped to Ethiopia and founded an anti-Siad Bar organization initially called the Somali Salvation Front SSF, later the Somali Salvation Democratic Front SSDF. One of Bar's earliest forms of collective punishment targeting non-combatant clans was against the Majirdin in 1979. Between May and June 1979, his presidential guard called the Red Beret killed over 2,000 Majirdin clan members. The Umar Mahmud sub-lineage of Majirtin particularly became the victims of this violence. Although this violence was in response to the Majirtin based SSDF, Bar on the other hand began to target the entire clan. Each subsequent attack by the SSDF resulted in collective punishment against the wider Majirtin. This included sieges and blockades against Majirtin inhabited areas, closure of schools, closure of health facilities, and the destruction of subsistence facilities such as water reservoirs and cattle. Each action by the Bar government strengthened Majirtin resolve against the Bar led government. The Red Berets systematically smashed the small reservoirs in the area around Galkeo so as to deny water to the Umar Muhammad Majirtin sub clans and their herds. In May and June 1979, more than 2,000 Umar Muhammad, the Majirdin sub clan of Colonel Ahmad, died of thirst in the waterless area northeast of Galkeo, Garuao, and Jaraban. In Galkeo, members of the Victory Pioneers, the urban militia known for harassing civilians, raped large numbers of Majirdin women. In addition, the clan lost an estimated 50,000 camels, 10,000 cattle, and 100,000 sheep and goats. Topic. Against the Isaac In April 1981, a group of Isaac businesspeople, students, former civil servants and former politicians who lived in the United Kingdom founded the Somali National Movement in London. Initially, the aim of the various groups that merged to create the SNM was not to create an armed liberation front, but rather these groups formed as a direct response to the harsh policies enacted by the Bar regime against the Isaac people. By 1982, the SNM transferred their headquarters to Dire Dawa in Ethiopia, as both Somalia and Ethiopia at the time offered safe havens of operation for resistance groups against each other. From there the SNM successfully launched a guerrilla war against the Bar regime through incursions and hit-and-run operations on army positions within Isaac territories before returning to Ethiopia. 
The SNM continued this pattern of attacks from 1982 and throughout the 1980s, at a time the Agaden Somalis some of whom were recruited refugees made up the bulk of Bar's armed forces accused of committing acts of genocide against the Isaac people of the North, a policy letter written by Bar's son-in-law and viceroy in the North General Muhammad said Hersey Morgan known as the Morgan Report formed the basis of the Bar regime's retaliation against the Isaac following a successful SNM attack on Hargisa and Barao. The policy letter provided implemented and recommended measures for a final solution to Somalia's Isaac problem. According to Rebecca Richards, a systematic state violence that followed was linked to the Bar government's belief that SNM attacks were receiving assistance from the Ethiopian government. The harsh reprisals, widespread bombing and burning of villages by Bar regime followed every time there was an attack by SNM believed to be hiding in Ethiopia. The regime violence in the north and northwest was disproportionate, affected many communities, particularly Isaac. The number of civilian deaths in this massacre is estimated to be between 50,000 to 100,000 according to various sources, whilst local reports estimate the total civilian deaths to be upwards of 200,000 Isaac civilians. The government attack included the leveling and complete destruction of the second and third largest cities in Somalia, Hargisa, which was 90% destroyed, and Barao, 70% destroyed respectively through a campaign of aerial bombardment and had caused 400,000 Somalis, primarily of the Isaac clan, to flee their land and cross the border to Hardashik in Ethiopia as refugees, creating the world's largest refugee camp then, 1988, with another 400,000 being internally displaced. A United Nations investigation concluded that the Bar regime's killing of Isaac civilians was a genocide, and that the crime of genocide was "...conceived, planned and perpetrated by the Somali government against the Isaac people." <laughs> <laughs> against the Hawiya The Hawiya moved quickly to occupy the south portion of Somalia. The capital of Mogadishu is located in the country of the Abgal subclan of Hawiya. Since the independence era, the Hawiya tribe had occupied important administrative positions in the bureaucracy and in the top army command. However, in the late 1980s disaffection with the regime set in among the Hawiya, who felt increasingly marginalized by the Siad Bar regime, Tajir M. Ali states that Bar assuaged the Majirtin, and targeted other groups like the Hawiya. According to Ali, with funds and clan appeals, he bar was able to entice the bulk of SSDF fighters to return from Ethiopia and participate in his genocidal wars against the Isaac in the north and later against the Hawiya in the south, including Mogadishu. According to Muhammad Haji Ingiris, the vicious atrocities during the reign of Bar were not an isolated event nor unusual in Somalia's history. Bar also targeted the Hawiya. Faced with saboteurs by day and sniper fire by night, Siad Bar ordered remaining units of the badly demoralized Red Berets to kill civilians on a large scale. By 1989 torture and killing became the order of the day in Mogadishu. The Red Berets killed 450 Muslims demonstrating against the arrest of their spiritual leaders. More than 2,000 were seriously injured. The next day, 47 people, mainly from the Isaac clan, were taken to Jaysira Beach west of the city and summarily executed. The July mass killings prompted a shift in United States policy as the United States began to distance itself from Siad Bar. With the loss of United States support, the regime grew more desperate. An anti-Siad Bar demonstration on July 6, 1990, at a soccer match in the main stadium deteriorated into a riot, causing Siad Bar's bodyguard to panic and open fire on the demonstrators. At least 65 people were killed. A week later, while the city reeled from the impact of what came to be called the Stadia Corna Affair, Siad Bar sentenced to death 46 prominent members of the Manifesto Group, a body of 114 notables who had signed a petition in May calling for elections and improved human rights. During the show trial that resulted in the death sentences, demonstrators surrounded the court and activity in the city came to a virtual halt. On July 13, a shaken Siad Bar dropped the charges against the accused. As the city celebrated victory, Siad Bar, conceding defeat for the first time in 20 years, retreated into his bunker at the military barracks near the airport. The most shocking and gruesome revenge Siad Bar took against the Hawiya, in particular the Hawaitel sub-clan was the massacre he ordered in January 1991, just before he escaped Mogadishu for his clan strongholds in the deep south of Somalia. 
It is estimated that over 6,000 individuals died in the massacre of Beledwain, including women and children. This was a major turning point for the USC and further fueled the need to overthrow Siad Bar's regime, eventually proving successful as he was overthrown in late January. This incident in Beledwain was the major cause for clan tensions as Siad Bar's militias mainly consisted of Marian, Agaden and Majirdin militias, led by General Morgan Majirdin, who had caused many civilian deaths towards Isaacs S &M by sending bombers to attack the northern cities, including Hargisa Somalia's second largest city. In response to mutinies by Hawiya soldiers in October 1989, Bar's presidential guard called the Red Berets, began attacking Hawiya civilians. According to history professor Robert F. Bowman, this shift of antagonism towards to Hawiya was a major military blunder since Bar's stronghold happened to be in Mogadishu, whose environs are majority Hawiya. These actions by Bar sealed his fate, as by 1990 the predominantly Hawiya USC United Somali Congress military group had beset the capital of Mogadishu. Topic. Against Agaden The bulk of Darud refugees who fled the Ethiopia-Somalia war were Agaden. Bar's hostility towards the Agaden was in part derived from the huge influx of their clan members in the aftermath of war with Ethiopia, which resulted in a swelling of their numbers. This surge in their population resulted in what he viewed as an undue influence, with a change in the balance of power away from his own Marian clan towards the Agaden clan. This resulted in Bar dismissing several military officers who were of Agaden lineage. The friction escalated when Bar purged the Minister of Defense, Aidan Gabio from office, who was of Agaden lineage. In May 1989, this culminated into a revolt by Agaden soldiers stationed in Kismayo, the formation of an anti-Bar military faction formed of Agaden clansmen called SPM Somali Patriotic Movement and the defection of Agaden Colonel Omar Jess. <laughs> Somaliland and Puntland In 1991, the Somali National Movement declared the northwestern portion of the country independent. Although internationally recognized as an autonomous region of Somalia, Somaliland, as with neighboring Puntland, has remained relatively peaceful. References Further reading The Fall of Siad Bar and the Descent into Civil War Nations Encyclopedia Majirdin Insurgency in Somalia 1978-1986 Onwar. Com. 